Hello and welcome back to Home TV's Women's History Month interview series. I'm Taya Wright. Today, to conclude our series, I am with Meridian Township Supervisor Patricia Heron Jackson. Thank you so much for being here today with me, Madam Supervisor. And to begin the interview, I'd like to start off with the first question. Please tell me more about your background. Well, thank you for doing this for um, Women's History Month. And I should have expected that you'd come in and ask me <laughs> to do this. But um, to answer your question about my background, basically I will always be a black woman from the South, um, educated primarily in HBCUs. I am a scientist, have been a scientist for many years worked for many years at, um, for um, nearly 30 years at Michigan State University as a um, biochemist in the microbiology department. <laughs> it kind of, kind of uh, summarizes that whole thing. And other than that, I am a daughter, sister, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a um, a um, supervisor in Meridian Township, and I'm sure we'll get into how that happened. <laughs> but um, that's it in a nutshell. Awesome. And then could you tell me what your position as Meridian Township Supervisor entails? Um, the supervisor, as I've been learning for the last year, is essentially the organizer and manager of the Township Board and the board's relationships with um, our administrative management and our staff and the public. Yes. And my primary role is to conduct the meetings, to plan the meetings, and to plan um, how we um, supervise, I guess, the administration and operations of at Meridian Township. Awesome. And then, what was your path to becoming Township Supervisor? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I moved to Michigan with my husband, who came here for a position at Michigan State. And um, maybe, oh, 10 years in, I didn't have enough to do as a, a mother and a family member and a, and a professional, so I started watching Township Board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and that led me into uh, participation in a, um, a election campaign where um, I was very much in um, support of at least one of the people that I had watched a lot on television and I approved of the way she did her job. And so I wanted to help her move up in the um, organization at Meridian Township and, and run for supervisor. We did that. Uh, this election actually involved a bipartisan uh, group of people running together for the township board. And so we had, um, Democrats and Republicans running together, and uh, most of them were elected to that to those posts. Um, at the end of that process, I said, "Well, hey, I did a good job. I'll go back to but the rest of my life." And I got a call from um, a, a good friend of mine, still Julie Brixey, who suggested that I. Um, apply for a position, a volunteer position on the Planning Commission. And my first questions were, what is the Planning Commission and what do they do? <laughs> and um, Julie assured me that uh, I could learn to do whatever it is they did, just like everyone else does. And so I did. And for 16 years, I was a um, member of the Meridian Township Planning Commission. Um, in 2016, um, that same person convinced me <laughs> to uh, run for the township board and um, I had to do some soul searching. I was still working 
my, my um, primary job as a um, microbiologist at that time and um, decided to run. Uh, actually, I was about to retire from the, oh, wow. the first job. <laughs> she she uh, she encouraged me to run for a, a trustee position on the board, and um, I ran. The um, group of us were very successful in bringing a a uh, coordinated board to the township, and I started that in 2016. 20, 2016, I think. Um, we ran again, M many of us, lots of changes occurred and the personnel on the board uh, during that time and we ran again in 2020, um, we won and um, so this was again as a trustee to the township board. Uh, unfortunately in um, February of 2022, we lost our um, our um, leader at that time, Supervisor Steiker, and I decided then that um, I thought I was ready to uh, run for the position of supervisor, and I, I did that. I took that role on temporarily until the um, June, uh, the August primaries and the November um, election 2022 was elected to the township board and he rang in. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then were there any obstacles that you faced on your journey to becoming uh, the township supervisor? And then if so, what were they? Um, I don't know that there were obstacles to becoming um, the supervisor. There may have been more obstacles to uh, getting into politics and, and running for a position as a trustee. And those were the typical kinds of obstacles working women with families have. Uh, in my case, my children were mostly grown and, and away from home. And so I, one would say, one could say I had more time and freedom to um, take on a position as a township trustee and to work for the township while um, taking care of the other uh, roles that we women take on. Um, and so for younger women with younger children, I see as an obstacle just a, a matter of time and time management. Uh, you, 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 there is no opportunity to um, lessen your engagement in the um, family responsibilities and in professional responsibilities. And so you actually are taking on more responsibility and, and, and more um, time commitment and those kinds of things. And I, I would think that for anyone coming into a, a, um, an opportunity like this on top of what you are already doing, time, time management, how you do it, I'm no expert by the way, <laughs> and um, um, just how, how you add new responsibilities and new time commitments to those that you already have and you're already trying to manage as successfully as you can. So um, other than that, actually getting into this position, e even uh, um, where my children are all away from home and, and less, uh, res respo I have less responsibility for their well-being, there is still the idea of what do you do with children, <laughs> you know. And so flexibility and, and more options about childcare temporarily in situations like these is probably always going to be an impediment for women. All right, thank you. And then what are some things that you admire about the women in your life? Oh. Um, so the women in my life now, I have to even include my adult daughters and daughters-in-laws <laughs> and daughter-in-laws and the like. 
Um, I think that, at, but if I go all the way back to my mother, it's resilience and forethought and patience. Um, and the ability to see beyond the immediate resolution of a, of a situation or a problem and imagine and consider the unintended, some of the unintended consequences and um, new impacts that, you know, uh, occur at the end, uh, uh, because of the way you chose to solve it or address the problem. Resilient mm. patience. Patience is still a very, a very uh, good um, characteristic for everybody to have and to bring to all situations. Thank you. And then when you walk into this building, you see a majority of female workers, which for some time wasn't as common as it is today. Can you talk about your experience starting in the work field and how many female colleagues you have? Hmm, wow. So, um, as, a, as, a, as a biological researcher at a major university, there are, um, not, in, in my case, not only is there an issue with fewer women than men, just in general, but black men and women in those situations, um, it's probably still a, a, an issue. The fewer people like me doing the same kind of work that I'm doing. Now, on one level, that's not a problem unless the people doing it make it a problem. <laughs> you know, and so when you come to um, when I when I came and started working at Meridian Township, there were women that Meridian Township has been led by a lot of um, amazing women for a very long time. There are women who have been who are. Um, almost immortal leaders <laughs> uh, whose name is associated with making Meridian Township what it is. Um, there have always been women leaders here. Uh, in walking into this building and looking at those women who come here every day to do a job as opposed to board members who are not here every day, but always influencing how this um, um, uh, township is governed and operated. There are more of them in static leadership roles now than before. Um, I wasn't spending a whole lot of time in this building before I became supervisor, more so as a trustee than as a planning commission. So I wasn't very involved or engaged with the women who worked behind the scenes to do the kinds of jobs like communications and, and um, finance and HR and those kinds of things. But as far as I can remember, they were always women in Meridian Townships. So my memory only goes back to about Ooh, 2000. <laughs> so, um, um, I, I think the, um, in, in Meridian Township, one of the areas in which there are many more women than there have been in the past is particularly the police force. And um, I think that everyone here is appreciative of that change, and not because there was anything wrong with having all men as your police officers and maybe a few women, but more women, I think, makes the force and its um, responsibility to an interaction with the community even better. So um, I think that answers your question. Yeah. Does that answer your yes. question? Yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then, what advice could you give to other women and young girls out there beginning their journey? Hmm. Particularly young girls 
and, and, and other women as well, um, to be more adventurous, to go places and be in places where you don't know anything about, but you can always learn something. And one of the things you can, you can begin to learn, I think, is I can do that. I, from wherever I start, whatever sets of skills I've um, accumulated and developed, I can probably use them in, an, in another um, arena or another location uh, field that I had not thought about before. So be adventurous and to engage in new kinds of things and don't worry so much about today I don't see anybody that looks like me doing that. Um, tomorrow maybe we all will. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much and that's very very moving and very inspirational. What is one change that could make the future better for women? What's one change that you could make? Um, I, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, other than more flexible and um, more options related to childcare, temporary childcare, on-call childcare, that, that kind of thing, that give women a little more freedom to try other kinds of ways of um, contributing to their, their um, um, lifestyle or life and the life of the community. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Supervisor Jackson, for allowing me to interview you today. And we appreciate your time, effort, and dedication that you put forth as Meridian Township Supervisor. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to our Women's History Month series here at Home TV. Once again, I'm Taya Wright, and thank you and have a great rest of your day.